My dad was murdered in the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting. I hear my phone go through two vibrating ring cycles. I open it up. I miss those calls. It was my sister. And I read a text and it says, call me ASAP. I give her a call and she says, uh, there's, been a, there's been a shooting at dad's synagogue. My name's Jared Younger. At the time I was 18 months old, I was adopted. Uh, the Younger family, Sherry Younger and Irv Younger, they came in and adopted me. They already had a daughter that they, they adopted. Talking to my dad some years ago and he said, um, he said that he fell in love with me the moment he laid eyes on me. I went to Hebrew school uh, twice a week at uh, Beth Shalom. And so I was going through all of these things and the thing that I was realizing is there wasn't any life in it. There was some intense abuse in that home. My mom had diabetes, so her blood sugar would spike. She would react really impulsively to that. This proclamation of being Jewish, but I'm seeing a lot of behavior that just didn't line up. And so <laughs> I just remember being a confused little kid. My identity through high school was education. Going to my room immediately and just studying and canceling my mom out, but she'd still get to me. My escape was just dreaming of a good college to go to. That's what my hope was in. When she died, you know, we're already in a position where we didn't have any money and really couldn't pay for me to go through school. I'm just kind of figuring out what is this whole life about? My whole identity was manifested in becoming a history professor, as silly and stupid as that is. And so now I'm like, what do I even live for? And so I placed all of my attention and focus into writing a movie. All I was doing was working out, writing, watching a lot of movies and I was absolutely out of my mind. I was so delusional. I'd walk around at night just rehearsing for Hollywood. At that point, it was my identity. That was the success of that screenplay was what my hope was in. When I was in Hollywood, I ended up working for another nonprofit organization and they would do canvassing work all over the, all over the LA area. So I'm out there and nobody's stopping for me, nobody. And I'm getting so discouraged. I make a left, stand in front of the side street and wait and I see this couple. And I start analyzing them like a salesman would. And I'm just so ready, I'm like, they're mine. I'm gonna get them. They end up coming up to me, they have the biggest smiles on their faces. I can remember that smile so vividly. I'm so ready to tell them about this and it didn't get very far because they ended up sh telling me about Jesus. This woman who was talking to me, her name is Lisa. She had the same exact condition that killed my mom. And this guy, Alan, her husband, had some Jewish background to him. And I was just so encouraged by speaking with both of them. They ended up inviting me to their beach house. Anytime Jesus was mentioned, just kind of in, in, my, in the community I grew up in, he's not, he wasn't taken seriously or there was just a lot of anger. And that's what I had. I just had anger and I didn't take it seriously for the most part. And so that was what they got. I remember um, Alan specifically saying to me, you know, don't take our word for these things. Why don't you ask God himself if he's real? I remember I was there, it was the fourth night I was in their home. I was about to jump in the shower and I looked in the mirror and I just said, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. And boom, I just had, my whole life was flashing before me like a projector. From the time I was born to kindergarten, Everything was perfectly calculated, harmoniously connected to me meeting that couple in Santa Monica. He showed me everything that I had experienced in life had culminated and was, was absolutely brought to this place where I had met Alan and Lisa in Santa Monica. Was in that shower, I was an atheist. I came out of that shower believing that God exists. I did not confess God to be Jesus at that time. I just knew there was a God. So I ended up getting a sick, sick um, with this flu. And I remember being so broken down, 
Teresa was over uh, the house, um, one of Lisa's friends, and she prayed as if she was like, just speaking as God, just Jared, I died on the cross for you. In the middle of it, I knew that I needed forgiveness and I needed a savior because the weight of the decisions that I had been making in my life just were not adding up. And I felt so hopeless and I knew I needed hope. And so it was at that moment that I believe there was just a full blown confession of, I want you in my life, Jesus. October 27th, I hear my phone go through two vibrating ring cycles. I open it up, I miss those calls, it was my sister, and I read a text and it says, call me ASAP. I give her a call and she says, uh, there's, been a, there's been a shooting at Dad's synagogue. And there was an anti-Semitic gunman who opened fire at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There were so many phone calls that my sister gave that I gave to him and everything was coming up short. During that wait period, the suspense was re so real. I could feel every ounce of second. Time was my enemy. The more time went by, the more we didn't hear from him, the less hope there was. And one of the hardest things that I was going through was regretting um, not being more loving of a son. She said, Dad got shot and he's dead. And I just, uh, I just said, no, Jordy, how do you know? Did they, she said, somebody was there at the synagogue, they saw him, he's dead. The morning of the funeral, I was on my knees and I was wrestling with God, should I be sharing, should I be sharing Jesus with these people? I said a lot about my dad and then I said, I wanna let you know that there's a God who loves everybody in this room. He knows the moment you took your first breath and when you're gonna take your last. And his name is Jesus Christ. Everything you've ever done that was awful and wrong, God loves you so much that he gave his son Jesus to pay for every single one of those things with his blood. Turn to the Lord with all your heart. Believe in Jesus, for the kingdom of God is at hand and your eternity depends on it. Mm -hmm.